What's up everybody? You're watching Model Aviator. I'm Adam and this week we're going to revisit the new Freewing 80mm Super Scale F9F8 Cougar. We use this airplane in our Scale Flight series. If you haven't seen that episode, we'll put a couple links where you can check it out. Quite a few of you said you'd like to see us do a full review on this airplane and our buddy Scott Elmore who owns the plane said we could keep it a while longer, so here we are. Now obviously it's already together, but luckily I kind of saw a review coming, so we can still show you how it got that way. The manual is very good, it's very descriptive in the steps, and the assembly is frankly pretty easy, but it is a plug and play. So you will need to choose what receiver you want to use and install it yourself. It does come equipped with Freewing's E52 gyro that's pre-installed and set up from the factory. So we chose a Spectrum AR8020T 8-channel telemetry receiver. That's a non-AS3X and safe receiver because we wanted to give their gyro a fair shot and see how it worked. Here's the part count. As you can see, there's not a lot to it. I like to start by binding my receiver and at least plugging everything in so that as I install components, I can test them and make sure the servos are working. Next, you'll assemble the tail section. You'll need this small wire hook that comes with the plane to do so. It's intended to be fished through the bottom front of the vertical, through the holes in the side for the horizontals. You hook your horizontal servo wires with that hook and pull them through to the bottom of the vertical. You'll end up with something like this where you have your rudder and two horizontal servo wires coming through the bottom front of your vertical. You'll then use a single carbon spar and install your two horizontals. You tighten those down with a single screw underneath. You'll see a board with metal pin connectors inside the cavity on the fuselage that you install your tail section to. You simply plug in the rudder and two elevator servo plugs into that board in the respective marked places and you'll use the cavity just in front of that board to tuck the wires away and get them out of the way when you sit your tail section down on the fuselage. You'll then use five screws to attach it, one on top and two on either side. Worth noting, you're going to have to use your hobby knife and put a small slit in the navy decal to access the holes on the front. Next you'll install the wings. The fuselage has two tubes sticking out that look like a wing tube. Those are actually for shipping. You're going to want to pull those out as each wing has its own glued in wing tube. You then attach the one ribbon plug, slide your wing into place. I squeezed the locking tabs so that I could get the tabs by the locking blocks easier. You want to get it flush and make sure that you don't have this situation. You notice that those tabs are in the center. You want the locking tabs like this all the way out so that they are fully engaged. Next you'll use the provided contact cement to install your rails for your drop tanks. They only go in one way so you can't get right and left mixed up. You'll use that same contact cement to install your cannons and your antenna. The refueling tube is friction fit so you can remove it for transport and storage and there is an optional plug that you can use if you so choose. The Cougar has a 41.3 inch wingspan. It's 56 and a half inches long. It's equipped with 9 gram hybrid digital servos, a 3658 2150 kV inrunner motor. It has a 100 amp ESC with a 7 amp UBEC and a thrust reverse function. The fan is 80 millimeters and it's a 12 blade affair and it's intended for batteries in the 6 cell range of 4000 to 5200 milliamps. We used HRB 6000 50 C packs and this example weighed 7 pounds, 0.5 ounces, ready to fly. Freewing says the Cougar is part of a new generation of 80 millimeter EDFs and that it's loaded with amenities and details normally reserved for 90 millimeter class jets. Of course, it has the E52 gyro and the thrust reversing ESC. It's also equipped with a newly designed, more efficient 12 blade fan unit. It has scale CNC landing gear, quick detach wings, a scale LED lighting package, and scale sequencing gear doors. The decals are plentiful, they're reasonably scale, and they're pre applied for you. And finally, it comes with full underwing stores. You have two drop tanks and four sidewinders. The sidewinders are a tab and slide installation, and the drop tanks attach with magnets. When it comes to setup, some important things to note. First, you will need an 8-channel transmitter and receiver if you want to take advantage 
of the extra features that would be the thrust reversing and the gyro modes. Now both those things are programmed from the factory and there are respective plugs. You simply plug them into your receiver, assign them to a switch, and you are good to go. You will need a three position switch for the gyro. With that you'll have gyro off, normal stabilization, and self leveling. Another thing we thought we'd point out about the setup is it has really nice ball links so they're very easy to adjust and we had to. We had to mechanically adjust every control surface on the airplane other than the rudder. It was perfectly centered. The ailerons weren't centered and the flaps and elevator halves were not moving at the same rate. So you want to be sure and check yours when you get it. Now that doesn't mean they're all going to be that way. It could just be this particular one and it's not really a big deal. It's not something that we consider a negative because that's just part of pre-made and preparation with any model. But we thought we'd point it out. The manual gives you some basic ideas for your pre-made and preparation. They give you a CG, and the CG is actually marked underneath the airplane. They give you some throw ideas. They leave the expo up to you because even they know that the real setup happens after you fly the airplane. That's when you see what it needs and you really get it dialed in. You just want to make sure that your pre-made and preparation puts you in a position to have an airplane in one piece after that first flight. So something you're definitely going to want to do before you fly it is make sure you are aware of the gyro positions on your switch and you want to make sure that your control surfaces are correcting the right way. Now we did deviate from the manual suggestions once we were done with it just a little bit. If you want to check out our setup we're going to have our normal setup page right before the flying as usual so you can do just that. So now we're going to get to the flying and unfortunately we did not have a lot of time with weather and scheduling. We had about an hour maybe an hour and 15 minutes one good clear morning out at Georgia Jets so we were able to put three flights on this airplane, a maiden flight, and I made two attempts on the second and third flights at a scale air show flight. The third flight is the one that we used in our scale flying series, so we put a link to that if you want to check that out. What you're going to see is the maiden flight where we trimmed it out, did some stall tests and a few test maneuvers. I landed it, made a couple of adjustments, and then tried my hand at a scale air show flight for the first time. So you'll see the first and second flight, don't forget that the setup page is next if you want to pause and check that out. And then we'll see you back here and we'll give you our final thoughts. And here we're just getting her trimmed out, making a few passes. This gyro appears to work similar to AS3X, meaning you can put a few clicks of trim in and it doesn't have an adverse effect on the way the gyro corrects. This is our clean stall test. And if you bring it all the way to the stop, it will finally drop that left wing. 
you simply neutralize the controls and fly it right out of it. Now we're going to put the gear and flaps down and prepare for a dirty stall. It's going to be a bit of a power on stall. I'm not going to let it come completely to a stop. I've seen what I need to see, so now I feel good about landing. I'm just doing some test maneuvers to see how it feels. Now we're setting up for our maiden landing. It's not my best, but considering it's first landing with the plane, it'll do. The ball bearing wheels on this thing, it really rolls a long way on this smooth runway. So the thrust burst comes in handy as a brake. So this is basically my first attempt at a scale flight with the Cougar. This is just my idea of what one of these might look like at an air show, maybe Oshkosh or something like that, if there was actually a flying example out there. And who knows, maybe someday one, somebody will restore one and we will get to see one of these at an air show again. The Cougar makes really good power. There's plenty on tap for maneuvers at around half to maybe 70% throttle. And when you give it the beans, it's really capable. There's plenty 
plenty of room for managing the throttle and extending your flight time with this one. My mind never really left the idea of flying this one scale. It's just how I like to fly an airplane like this. Clearly there's plenty of power and plenty of maneuverability for sport flying or much more aggressive flying with it if somebody wanted to do that. plan was to actually do a calculated dirty pass, but I didn't flip the gear switch soon enough. You have to remember, with a lot of freewing airplanes, this one included, the gear cycle time takes a bit. So on this flight, I either have a bad HRV battery, which absolutely could be the case, or I flew it a little too long. My intention is a fast pass and a vertical maneuver. And you just heard that actually was not me throttling back. That was the airplane going into low voltage cutoff, and I wasn't confident that I could get it around and bring it in upwind. So I'm going to do a downwind landing just to be safe. I've got plenty of runway, so as long as I keep my speed up, should be fine. And there you go. This thing flies as good as it looks. We'll get into that in a minute. I have a little bit of a critique. I have a buddy, Brent, that is an aeronautical engineer by trade. He is a scale buff and he has a discerning eye. He pointed out some things that are not true to scale to me about this airplane. He's a big Grumman fan. And I thought we'd kind of point these things out to you and maybe explain and critique a little bit. The oversized stab makes sense to me because a lot of model companies embellish things like that to make the airplane fly better as a model and to make it easier to fly for a broader set of skill sets in the modeling community. That just means you're going to sell more and that's a good business decision. So I get that. He pointed out that the flaps are not scale and that's true. When you look at the painted part of the model's fuselage that's painted like the flap, that entire painted area should be flap. I am guessing, just inspecting the model, that the reason they did that is so that the landing gear could be in the scale position. They'd have to move those inboard, which would make it less stable to a lot for the extra inch that they'd have to come in onto the fuselage to attach the wings to have the flaps to be accurate. 
not sure. There may have been another way to engineer still having the flaps accurate, but it is what it is. They're not exactly to scale. The stars and bars on the front are about half the size that they need to be. They should stretch from the end of the numbers all the way to the yellow or very near it. That's very easy fix. You email to Cali Graphics, you got that licked. And the last thing that he pointed out was that the canopy is a lot wider than it should be. It looks like to me they intended to make the hatch all canopy rather than make a hatch with a canopy on it. If they'd done that, they would have been able to get the canopy the right size more to scale. Not sure why they did that, but it is what it is. Now, these are things that your really discerning scale person is going to notice and it may bother them. None of them are deal breakers to me. There's nothing about this airplane that's a deal breaker to me. The one critique that I really don't care for personally is where the quick connects are for the wings. The fact that this is a super scale airplane and they put them on top just doesn't make sense to me. Maybe that's for convenience, but I would prefer to see them underneath, out of sight, out of mind. It would have just made the top of the airplane look that much cleaner. But other than that, I have no complaints. It's a beautiful airplane, has a lot of scale features. The landing gear is exquisite. And oddly enough, when we do reviews, we take a look at the sales page for the company that sells the airplane. We take a look at the claims that they make, the promises they make, and we test the airplane and hold it to that account. So they make the claim that this is the first super scale 80 millimeter jet to have CNC painted super scale gear. That's actually not accurate. There was one before this. This is the second one to my knowledge. That's fine. I am really glad to see Motion RC and Freewing get into the idea of 80 millimeter super scale airplanes because these things are really efficient. You can across the board get better flight times with most of your plug and play and bind and fly 80 millimeter jets versus the 90 millimeter jets and the new more efficient 12 blade fan they put in this works really really good we got four and a half minutes flying it the way you saw us fly it on a 6,000 you go to a 7,000 you get more than five five minutes on an airplane that looks this good and has this level of performance is really really excellent so I like that a lot I love the way the E52 gyro is programmed from the factory. In my mind, it's perfect. I wouldn't change a thing. The gains and the priority are right where they should be. The airplane flies beautifully. The thrust reversing, I found a lot of people think that's a gimmick. These things have ball bearing wheels, a lot of these. And on the super smooth long runway we have at Georgia Jets, these things will roll forever. So I kind of like having that just to use for brakes. Yeah. So it's a feature that, that I utilize. It's there if you want it, and I find it useful. Now, when it comes to skill level, this is not a hard scale jet to fly. It flies very good, has very good handling qualities. You saw the stalls clean and dirty. It's certainly not a good first EDF, but if you've flown an EDF and you have retractable gear and flap experience with something, you should be able to fly this airplane. It's not bad, so they don't really put a skill level on it, or maybe they do, maybe I missed that, but it's for an intermediate pilot, somebody that's got a little bit of EDF experience in my mind. So we are definitely going to add one of these to our collection when they get them back in stop. It's a beautiful airplane. I love the 80 millimeter size. Like I said, for me, that's a sweet spot. I want all my EDFs to be 80 millimeters, to be honest with you. So... If you'd like to do that, we'll put a link in the description where you can go to Motion RC and do just that. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful and entertaining. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week with something cool with wings.